Using the dictionary to discredit Satanism? To that I say fine, let's play the dictionary game, and I'll show you why this tiresome argument fails. Also, I'll be answering some questions from the listeners on satanic altars and selectively dealing with trolls online. Well, it's not Satan worship, it's Satanism. It's embracing the life-enriching things which have traditionally been given the devil's name. Pride, lust, earthly success, rational self-interest, atheism, humor, nonconformity, science, a passion for living, being selective about whom we love. We don't see these as shameful sins, but empowering ideals. And we also recognize the psychological power and fun of symbolism and aesthetics, so we utilize Satan as mythology's most fitting mascot for what we're about. Satan Splain, Satanic Talk with Church of Satan Magister Bill M. Magister Bill M. here with Satan Splain. As I record this now, last week was Thanksgiving. Personally, I always have liked Thanksgiving. If this position offends anybody, mmm, tough shit. Anyway, I view Thanksgiving as a day of gluttony and sloth, two of those wonderful seven deadly sins. Also a time to stop and be thankful. So, I will take a moment now to say I am thankful that people check out and support my work, whether it's Satan's Plane, The Devil's Mischief, Dr. Shits, or, you know, they've watched me as a musician, read one of my essays. You know, there are millions of things you could be checking out right now from the internet, and for the moment, you've chosen Satan's plane. So let me thank you and then fulfill my end of that deal by going on with the show. So several years ago, I wrote an essay titled Fine, Let's Play the Dictionary Game. This was posted straight to churchofsatan.com, where you can read it still. Uh, maybe it was posted before that briefly on Facebook. I don't remember. But in any case, it is on churchofsatan.com now. And as with most of my essays, or probably for that matter, most of the Satan Splain episodes, this essay addresses a problem I've seen happen over and over again. Namely, in the form of one particularly bad argument some people try to make about Satanism. So, I figured it would be appropriate for Satan Splain to read you that essay here on the show and also throw in some extra side notes. So, let's get right into it. Fine, let's play the dictionary game, an essay by Church of Satan Magister Bill M. As the Church of Satan has been explaining for over half a century, Satanism is not devil worship, but rather a non-theistic religion which utilizes the mythological Satan as an apt metaphor for its carnal philosophy. This admittedly can come as surprising news to people whose only prior exposure to supposed Satanists consisted of seeing crazed devil worshippers on TV talk shows, or the satanic cults depicted in horror movies, or the satanic stories from Christian propaganda tracks, or perhaps that one rebellious kid from back in middle school who embraced whatever devilish aesthetics his favorite rock bands were using, and either called himself a Satanist or was called a Satanist by other students. And many people, to their credit, will accept our corrections to these misconceptions they may have had. They will read or hear the Satanism 101 explanation, whether it's the one you hear at the, the beginning of every episode of Satan's Plane or something similar, and they may very well say, hmm, okay, I get it now. You don't actually do all that sort of crazy stuff in the horror movies. Other people, unfortunately, wish to remain willfully ignorant. They'll still cling to their incorrect views on what Satanists believe and do even after they've been corrected. One of the most tiresome forms of this argument is what I call the dictionary game. This is when somebody tries to argue, I just looked up Satanism in the dictionary and it defines it as innate wickedness or obsession with or affinity for evil, specifically worship of Satan, marked by the travesty of Christian rites. So... You're wrong about what Satanism is. Now, before explaining why this argument is a fallacious one, it's worth noting that Satanists are not the only people who would find a disagreeable description of themselves in the dictionary. Let's look at our dictionary and consider the following. The word pagan. Well, dictionary entries for the word pagan include, quote, an irreligious or hedonistic person, 
or even, quote, an uncivilized or unenlightened person. The reality is that there are many humans today who identify as pagans, and I doubt they would find these to be accurate descriptions of themselves. Okay, that was with pagan. How about atheism? How does the dictionary describe atheism? Well, some dictionaries describe atheism as, quote, the doctrine or belief that there is no God. Atheists themselves, however, overwhelmingly describe atheism as simply the absence of any belief in deities. It's right in the word itself, atheism, a, the root word theos, without deity. That's literally what it means. And I've explained this in some several past episodes of Satan's Plane. You know, you either believe in a deity or you don't. If you're not a person who decidedly believes in God or some other deity, you are an atheist. Rejecting the notion that there is a God is not the same as positively asserting that there is no God. You don't have to positively assert deities don't exist in order to be an atheist. Just not believing them is enough. And also thoroughly explained in past episodes, no, I'm not describing agnosticism here. Agnosticism and atheism are not mutually exclusive. Agnosticism is not some sort of halfway point or third choice between theism and atheism. Again, I've talked about all this before. See Satan's Plain episode number 16. Let's get on with this show. Now, who are some other groups of people who show up in the dictionary? Well, I know Wiccans tend to identify as witches and practitioners of witchcraft, but I don't think they would be too happy to open up a dictionary and see witchcraft described as, quote, communication with the devil or with a familiar. Nor would they take too kindly to the word witch being described as a woman practicing black witchcraft or as, quote, an ugly old woman or hag. And if there are any Christians listening who think the examples I've given so far, Satanists, pagans, atheists, witches, well, they all really don't count because these are just weird, evil people. Mm, well, let's take a look in the dictionary and look at the entry for Christian. Yes, even the word Christian can have entries in the dictionary, which many Christians would reject as inaccurate. For example, here's one entry, quote, a member of any of certain Protestant churches. So that's a description given of Christian, but I'm sure that some Christians of the non-Protestant variety, such as, you know, Catholics and Orthodox Christians, would object to that exclusionary description in the dictionary. Some dictionaries also describe Christian the adjective as, quote, acting in a kind or generous way, to which I know some Christians will say, no, 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 merely being a kind person does not make you a Christian because God will still send you to hell if you haven't been saved. Well, I actually agree with the first half of that, just merely being kind obviously doesn't make you Christian. But yeah, we've all heard what, uh, you know, Christians would say, or for that matter, this dictionary I have describes Christianity first as, quote, the religion derived from Jesus Christ. But I'm sure you've heard some Christians claim, no, no, Christianity is not a religion, it is a relationship with Jesus. So hopefully you get my point by now. My point is that it's not Satanists who are objecting to how the dictionary describes their religion. It's not just the Satanists. But let's take this a step further back and try to understand what's going on here. Are all of these people incorrect about their religion? Are all these people, Satanists, Pagans, Atheists, Christians, Wiccans, are they all just basing their religious identity on the incorrect meaning of words? Or taking the other extreme here, are the dictionaries just completely incorrect and meaningless and their definitions are arbitrary? To paraphrase a Lewis Carroll fable. Are we free to make any words mean anything we want them to mean? No. No. Of course not. No to all the above. So what is going on here? Well, here is the key point which many people miss. Dictionaries do not give definitions of words. Dictionaries give usages of words. Let me repeat that. Dictionaries give usages, not definitions. Dictionaries, you see, are not absolute authorities on objective truth. Dictionaries are reference books. 
Much like encyclopedias, they are handy, but not meant to tell you everything you would ever need to know about a particular topic, or in this case, a particular word. Now, some of you listeners may remember that there was a past pair of Satan Splain episodes on the topic of logic and fallacies, and I gave examples of various logical fallacies. And when you tell a Satanist, well, you're not practicing Satanism because the dictionary says Satanism is something else. Well, I would say you are using a logical fallacy there, particularly the logical fallacy known as argument from authority, or sometimes called appeal to authority. In this case, you are saying that the dictionary is the authority. And, uh, well, I hate to break it to you, but one line from Webster's Dictionary doesn't erase the fact that a thoroughly established non-theistic religion called Satanism has existed since 1966. If a page in your dictionary describes people one way and reality shows them behaving otherwise, mm, sorry, reality wins. In fact, I will go you one further, and this is something I didn't mention in the essay, because about a month ago, I was in an antique store and I found a book on logic, and it was a nice little hardcover book printed in 1896, so needless to say, I bought it. Yes, I do buy and read books on topics like logic and mathematics in my spare time. I am that much of a nerd. But anyway, this book was titled Logic, an Introductory Manual for the Use of University Students. And I bring all this up because chapter six in this book is about definitions. And it essentially makes the same point that I just made. Quote from the book. By definition, we mean the explicit statement of the connotation of a term. Then later in the book, it goes on to say, the explanation of a word does not necessarily involve giving its proper definition. Dictionary, quote unquote, definitions are usually only explanations in which some partial synonym of the word is given or a description of the thing to which the name applies. They usually give the popular connotation, the rough current meaning, but not the exact list of attributes, all of which must be present and none of which must be absent if the name is to be given. And the book goes on, of course, but hopefully you get the point. You know, it just over a hundred years ago, pointing out the same thing I'm pointing now. So back to the essay. Furthermore, a closer look at these dictionary entries for Satanism show that they include old usages of the term Satanism with a lowercase s. Now this word, Satanism itself, existed before the Church of Satan. We have never denied this. But just because the word existed doesn't mean an entire religion of the same name also existed at the same time. I'm sure I could find some book from the 1800s that used the word computer, or Macintosh for that matter, but obviously that doesn't mean Abraham Lincoln had a laptop. So if the word Satanism didn't refer to an actual religion, what did it refer to? Well, if you look at how the word was used, it was a pejorative term. So it was an insult term, essentially. General wickedness, it was sometimes described as, again, according to the dictionary, or in even more archaic cases, I've found that it was used to describe a sin itself, as in homosexuality is a Satanism. Now notice in this last example, the ism suffix doesn't mean a belief system or ideology, like the ism suffix does in words like Buddhism or Marxism, but no, rather a specific sort of act, like the ism in words like a colloquialism or a baptism, a truism, a criticism. So the ism takes on a different meaning here. So at best, the word Satanism back then was used to describe a blasphemous sort of behavior not an actual religion, not a full-fledged belief system. And just to further clarify this point, getting a little away from the essay for a moment, the bottom line is that there was no actual religion calling itself Satanism and its practitioners calling themselves Satanists until the Church of Satan. There were devil worshippers, 
And that's what they were called, devil worshippers. And even then, we don't really see much of a defined religion among those devil worshippers. The Satanic Bible provides a brief history on some of these alleged groups, and frankly, they seem to be largely unrelated cases of people wanting to do some blasphemy for the sake of blasphemy, or a black mass for, you know, an excuse to have an orgy. There is still no real evidence of these same people having a clearly laid out philosophy for how to go about life when ritual time is over. No contemplation of how to deal with practical problems in life, or human interaction, or those are the sorts of things that distinguish religion from theater. So once again, the word Satanism existed. And we can find some references in the dictionary using that old usage of the word. But to say that the old and vague usage of the term to describe general blasphemy, or sinning, must also define our religion as Satanists today, or that these are all just different denominations of the same religion, sorry, none of these are valid arguments. And yet, and yet, we still see idiots who do this. Recently, there was uh, this Christian on uh, X, formerly known as Twitter, whose definition of Satanism kept changing. He said first it was just autonomy. Then he said Satanism was general blasphemy and that any person who was spitefully going against his Christian religion could be accurately labeled a Satanist. He said Thelema, the religion of Aleister Crowley, was a type of Satanism. He said all atheists are obeying the will of Satan, and thus any atheist can be called a Satanist. And of course, at some point during all this, he tried using the dictionary as one of his authorities on the matter, which in the long run didn't even agree with what he was saying in the first place, because he kept changing his definitions of Satanism on the fly. I similarly saw another idiot back in October who argued that the root word of Satan means adversary, and it's true, it does, but then she used this to argue that therefore any and all acts of adversarialism could be accurately called Satanism. And I said, no, it doesn't work like that. Just because Satan means the adversary doesn't mean that any person who is acting adversarial can just be called a Satanist, or practicing Satanism. And to further drive this point home, I gave an analogy. The word Christ literally means the anointed one, as in anointed with oil. That's what Christ means. But it does not follow that putting vinegar dressing on a salad makes it Jesus. All right, let's get back to the article. You know, I could have just ended the article here because I made my point on why the dictionary argument against Satanism doesn't work. But I decided to take this one step further. As long as we have our dictionaries open and in front of us, let's have some fun. Let's see if there are any words commonly associated with Satanism or Satan. And if those words, many usages upon deeper examination, do in fact describe Satanism as we Satanists know it and practice it. So I decided to take a look at words like Satan, devil, sin, witchcraft, and magic. We know that there are some supernatural meanings of all these words, but there are many additional usages of these words which do not refer to the supernatural or the spiritual. Let's start with Satan. As I've already pointed out, dictionaries note that Satan is a Hebrew word, and its original meaning is adversary. Satan means adversary. Does that relate to Satanism? Well, of course that relates to Satanism, because as Satanists, we are adversaries. We are adversarial to things supposedly spiritual. We are adversarial to the status quo. Like I say in the intro to every Satan's Plan episode, we make use of Satan as mythology's most fitting mascot, for what we're about. So how about other words? How about the word devil? Merriam-Webster's dictionary describes devil as, among other things, quote, a person of notable energy, and quote, dashing spirit, or quote, one who is mischievous. You know, as in, oh, you got me good there, you little devil, you. Also, it can just be a word for a fellow in some circumstances, as in, you know, what a lucky devil. Other descriptions here for devil are, quote, something 
very trying or provoking, as in, I'm having a devil of a time trying to fix this car. Or, quote, the difficult, deceptive, or problematic part of something. Similarly, there's the related adjective devilish, described as mischievous or roguish, as in, she has a devilish grin. Now, do any of these meanings I just listed relate to Satanism? You bet. Satanists are not devil worshippers, but we are devils ourselves in the sorts of ways I just described. People of notable stanima, or of notable mischief, we enjoy not only the piety-destroying nature of mischief, but putting norms to the challenge, the power of doubt over faith, and self-serving Machiavellian tactics. As I've been saying on my other podcast, The Devil's Mischief, for the past 20 years, comedy in and of itself is satanic. It's devilish. Laughter and satire and ridicule. Next dictionary word, sin. How about the word sin? How does the dictionary describe sin? Well, yeah, there's the stupid religious usage of the word, but how about the rest? Or for that matter, let's look at the related adjective sinful. Some dictionaries point out that the word sinful is sometimes used colloquially to mean something quite indulgent. As in, you know, this chocolate cake is sinfully delicious. In fact, I recall a brand of cookies that was around back in the 1990s called Sinful Selects. Speaking of food, there is, of course, Devil's Food Cake, along with the American brand dessert cakes known as Devil Dogs. Now, to me, this is reflected in Satanic Statement number 1. Satan represents indulgence instead of abstinence. On the other hand, we see Devil show up in foods like deviled eggs and deviled ham because they're spicy, not unlike the uncomfortable truth of Satanism to the people who only have a taste for the safe. I mentioned witchcraft earlier. Let's look in our dictionaries for witchcraft. Well, dictionary entries for witchcraft include not just mentions of sorcery and supernatural powers, but also, quote, an irresistible influence or fascination. Now, this usage of the word witchcraft is nothing new. One of the most famous examples is the song Witchcraft. And uh, almost a decade before the Church of Satan was founded, Frank Sinatra sang his rendition of this song, Witchcraft. I'm sure many of you have heard it. The song Witchcraft is about, well, it's not about devil worship or the occult, is it? No. It's about a beautifully alluring woman. Sinatra's record, by the way, received uh, four Grammy nominations, but I digress. And gee, wouldn't you know, this is the sort of witchcraft we describe in our book, The Satanic Witch. Lesser magic. Those of you who've read that book know that this isn't the sort of witchcraft based on faith and supernatural forces, but rather the psychological and supernormal art of seduction. Again, irresistible influence or fascination, as it says in the dictionary. From a satanic standpoint, that Sinatra song has far more to do with witchcraft than anything you'll read in a silver Ravenwolf paperback. Which brings me to another word from the dictionary with some interesting descriptions. Magic. How does the dictionary describe magic? Is it all necessarily supernatural? Well, no, of course not. In fact, when most people use the term magic, they don't mean something supernatural. Magic can mean, quote, the art of producing illusions as entertainment, by the use of sleight of hand, deceptive devices, etc. So this is sometimes more specifically called stage magic. This is the magic you see at a magic show. And that's one description of the word magic. But the word is also used to refer to things that are, quote, mysteriously enchanting. For example, you may hear somebody say, Gee, I went to Julian Bob's wedding this weekend, and no, oh, it was simply magical. What does that mean? Does it mean something supernatural is going on? No, it means something mysteriously enchanting or otherwise so emotionally moving it's really hard to put into words. Something so unconventional, you just got to say, wow, that was magic. So let's take a look at all this. Magic as a theatrical art form, producing illusions as entertainment in a very subjective setting by the magician. And or creating an event that is mysteriously enchanting. Hmm. Well, gee, that sounds a lot like what we in Satanism call greater magic or ritual magic, doesn't it? So in summary, 
Dictionaries are reference books that catalog word usages, not authoritative definitions. The fact that dictionaries may catalog arcane or ignorant misuses of the term Satanism does not change the fact that we were the ones who established a definitive religion calling itself Satanism and still practice it today. Likewise, we see there are other religions whose practitioners would object to one or more usages or misusages of their religion's name in the dictionary. But lastly, even if we do decide to play the dictionary game, we find that many other emotionally charged words associated with devil worship or the darkly supernatural also have additional meanings in general English, and some of those do in fact nicely line up with Satanism as we Satanists know it and show once again why our name and our metaphors are apt ones. Satan is the adversary, and as Satanists we are adversaries to the spiritual and the status quo. We are devils in the mischievous, Machiavellian, or even skeptical sense of the term. We enjoy those indulgent things that people playfully call sinful. We have witchcraft in that Sinatra sense, detailed in our book The Satanic Witch. And not unlike stage magic, with no stupid little letter K at the end, we recognize the emotionally moving power of theatrics in the form of psychodrama and experience those emotionally moving events in life that aren't supernatural, but also are sometimes too profound for words or worth trying to rationalize to ourselves with mundane explanations. And I finish the article with these words. Words can be slippery at times, but we know who we are. We are Satanists. We have chosen that name because at the end of the day, it is the most apt and stimulating one, and it has served us well. But as the saying goes, the devil is in the details. And that concludes the essay Fine Let's Play the Dictionary Game and my additional commentary on it. Let's take a break. You are listening to Satan's Blame. You are listening to Satan's Blame, real satanic talk with Church of Satan Magister Bill M., for questions, comments, and correspondence, send an email to bill at satansplain.com. In 1966, Anton LaVey created the Church of Satan, marking the beginning of the Age of Fire and Year One Anno Satanus. In 1969, he published The Satanic Bible, codifying Satanism as a religion, the first time it's been done in human history. In the name of Satan, ruler of the earth, king of hell, come forth from the pit, bestow the blessings of hell upon us, for we are your children, and we invoke thee this night. In 2001, I was appointed high priest of the Church of Satan. In 2007, I published the Satanic Scriptures, further defining and expanding on Satanic philosophy and greater magic ritual. Hail Satan, full of might! Hail Satan, full of might! Our allegiance is with thee! Our allegiance is with thee! Cursed are they! Cursed are they! The God adorers! The God adorers! And cursed are the worshippers! Of the Nazarene eunuch! For the past 50 years, the Church of Satan has stood as the sole organization to define and defend Satanism as a religion. And though pretenders to the infernal throne have come and gone, we have stood the test of time and will into the future. Visit churchofsatan.com for more information and read the Satanic Bible and the Satanic Scriptures. Knowledge is the solution for ignorance. Hail Satan! Hail Satan! Hail Satan! Magister Bill M. here with Satan's Plane. Visit the official website for the show, satansplane.com. There you can listen to episodes of Satan's Plane. You can also listen to Satan's Plane on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, Audible, and other places where most podcasts can be found. Please like and follow Satan's Plane on YouTube, Facebook, and X. For all correspondence, email me directly. Bill at satansplain.com is the email address. And on a quick note, recently, since the last episode, I got to record an episode as a guest on uh, the Devil's Salon. 
a great little podcast, and I was uh, happy to be part of it. We had a lot of great uh, discussion, both during and afterwards. At the time of this recording, I don't know if it's available yet or if it's coming out later this month or next month, but uh, I will be sure to post the link in the usual places when that happens. And with that, let's get to the listener emails. I'm just going to read a couple for you in this episode. Clinton writes, Can you talk about having a home that makes erecting an altar difficult? I currently live in a place where I have an awkward corner that barely makes a proper direction. Every time I try a basic ritual, I end up vaguely hitting that direction. So, I wasn't sure what Clinton here meant by making a proper direction. If the problem is that you can't orientate your altar against a west wall, like the Satanic Bible suggests, well, remember that's only a suggestion. My advice in that case is to just treat the altar wall as the west wall as you're doing the invocations. Because I remember one time many years ago, I was doing a group ritual at somebody else's home, and it just wasn't uh, you know, practical to put the altar on the west wall of the room. It was actually against the east wall. So as I was doing the invocation, Satan from the south, Lucifer from the east, and so on, I decided to stay with the literal compass directions. But I realized that when I finished, uh, you finish on the west, which is facing away from the altar. So you then have to turn around, which is kind of awkward. But anyway, that's why I suggest treating the altar as west. You know, no matter where it is actually facing. Again, not an exact rule, of course. But, uh, you know, if if you have to have your altar in another direction and want to stay true to the compass points for the rest, go ahead. I mean, at this point, I'm happy to hear about any Satanist making an attempt to do a formalized ritual. Now, maybe I misread what uh, Clinton was trying to say. Maybe Clinton said that the altar is in an awkward corner that barely makes a proper direction. Maybe he just has the kind of crammed setup where he doesn't have much room to move his elbows. Doesn't much, not much room to move around as needed. Not enough room for his altar tools, whatever. As I've said before, an altar doesn't have to be permanent. It's great if, like me, you own a house or otherwise have space you can dedicate to that. Because even... Without doing a ritual, I think there's something to be said about having a space you've set aside. That's arguably a ritual in and of itself. You know, by having it there, you're saying, I am a Satanist, and I have a place I have set up in my own home as a monument, as a declaration of who and what I am. Now, some Satanists get uh, pentagram tattoos or sigil baphomet tattoos to make that declaration, you could argue. Some will wear a sigil necklace, even if it's hidden under the shirt. So I know I'm going off on a side rant here, but as I've said before, this sort of ritualistic expression to match convictions is something that humans do. And as a Satanist, I would say that it only makes sense to make that kind of expression in one way or another as a Satanist to make it physically. Getting back to the topic of altars, like I said, an altar doesn't have to be permanent. There were times when I was in college in a dorm room or an apartment with roommates and I didn't leave all my altar stuff out. I would put them in a box. Then when I found the time and place for a ritual, pulled them out, did the ritual, stow them back into the box when I was done. And I know other Satanists who, for example, taken the top draw of a bureau and just made that into an altar. So pull it out, light the candles, ritualize, then when you're done, put out the candles, all that, close the draw, you're done. So I will repeat what I said an episode or two ago, where there's a will, there's a way. Another email, this one is from James. James says, I enjoy reading the Church of Satan's Twitter page's arguments with idiotic Twitter trolls, but so many times I stop and wonder what's the point in responding to them. How do you decide which trolls to respond to or to just ignore? Uh, This is a great question, and I wrote back to James, and I said that, first of all, I know there are some people out there who would argue that responding to trolls and other assorted dim bulbs, as I put it, is always pointless, 
In fact, even when somebody from the Church of Satan account is replying back to some idiot and it goes back and forth, there's always some other person who eventually chimes in and tries schooling us with, oh, you shouldn't be replying to this person. And then they'll say either, oh, you won't change that person's mind, or oh, that idiot is just looking for attention, and if you reply, you're just indulging him in what he wants. And even outside of Twitter, when this sort of engagement happens, there's always somebody who argues that you, the Satanist, shouldn't be doing it for one or both of those two reasons. You know, one, that you won't change the person's mind, and or number two, you're giving the attention-starved what they want. Well, if you haven't guessed by now, I don't necessarily agree with that argument. I don't necessarily consider it to always be a waste of time. As I explained to James in my email back to him, there are several reasons why I might reply to a troll. And I could think of four reasons, which I gave him. One, it's fun. I have fun more often than not in responding to these vermin. Even if it seems like I'm angry, it's fun. Fun to me, at least. Especially if I give them a pretty damaging response or a really witty put down. So that's the first and foremost reason why I might reply to a troll, because it's fun. Reason number two, really, I I love the process of logically dissecting a bad argument. I love the challenge and the process of addressing a popular but false lie about Satanism, for example. A lot of the essays I've written over the decades, you know, as as a point I made earlier, as well as Satan's Plain episode topics, came out of a need to, you know, correct something, set the record straight. Now, reason number three, to be clear, I don't kid myself into thinking an online argument will change somebody's mind. It really does. I would say, however, that most people do end up changing their minds about certain topics after a long period of time. That happens. It doesn't happen all the time, but, you know, I mean, do you, you listeners, you know, do you believe all the same things about everything that you did 20 or more years ago to the utmost detail? I know I don't believe in the same exact things I believed, you know, 20 years ago. You go through life, you have different experiences, the world around you also changes, and you learn new information, you get different priorities as your own life changes and you get older, and as a result of all that, you sometimes arrive at different convictions, or at least some different ways to look at things. So maybe correcting somebody's lies online is not going to make them change their minds overnight, but you never know, they may in the long-term change, and maybe what gets that ball rolling is a correction, you know, they read from me or read from somebody else. And finally, reason number four I gave to James on why I might engage with these sorts of people, even if we reject my previous point and go along with the idea that you won't change the mind of that person, keep in mind that on Twitter and other social media, there are onlookers. So the exchange may have onlookers who initially weren't sure what to think about a subject one way or another, but then after seeing the response between me and the troll, they may end up thinking, oh, okay, well, this Satan's plain guy makes sense, and this Christian he's arguing with looks stupid and can't seem to make a valid argument and just says the same stupid stuff over and over. Now, All of this is not to say that I engage in each and every troll who tags me on Twitter or every idiot I run across. I don't have time for that. (laughs) Getting back to the original question, I do run into people now and then who I won't bother with or maybe engage with for a little bit, but eventually stop responding and move on. So, for example, some accounts are purely bot run spam accounts who are trying to feed off my traffic. Some are human run, you know, some are actual human accounts, but likewise try to make replies just to get people who read my channel to go check out their channel or their website, which may not even have anything to do with Satanism. So people like that, I just block, you know, they're just trying to mooch off of traffic. Um, Other times the numbers may just be overwhelming. Like if there's a Christian account 
with millions of followers and thousands of replies saying the same sorts of arguments. I got to think, okay, maybe if I reply, am I going to get an onslaught of thousands of angry Christians, you know, overwhelming me? It might be good for publicity, <laughs> you know, for my channel, but eh, maybe, you know, maybe I might be poking a hornet's nest there. So there are also some people who are just pure intellectual black holes. I can be helpful. You know, it can be helpful to study their behaviors and keep score. That can be helpful. But sometimes you'll see somebody who makes an argument, you debunk it, then they ignore that and they change the subject to make another argument. You debunk that and on and on it goes where they never acknowledge the lost arguments. And they may even repeat arguments they've already lost earlier in the same conversation. And at that point, it usually loses any fun. And they're not really worth the time. So yeah, in that case, sure, ignore and move on. Like uh, Khan said in The Wrath of Khan, second Star Trek movie, let them eat static. And let's go to another email. Anthony says that he has a satanic anecdote of sorts. So kind of, sort of anecdotal. In any case, I would say that's a good excuse to consider it a satanic anecdote anyway, which means it's time for this episode's satanic dote. Cue the satanic dote theme song. Satanic anecdotes. Satanic dotes. Anthony says, I just finished watching episodes 48 and 49. Okay, so I guess he's listening to Satan's Plane on YouTube. Um, just finished watching episodes 48 and 49, and the video that automatically played after episode 49 was a Christian video that starts out asking God to deliver us from Satan. The link is below. And then Anthony gave me a link to a YouTube video. So I decided for my own amusement to click on it and check it out. That was kind of a mistake on my part, because apparently this is a this was a Catholic show called Pints with Aquinas. And the guest was in, in, in this particular episode was an ex-Satanist. And I thought, oh boy, one of those. I remember first seeing these back in the 1980s during the Satanic Panic. Here we go. And uh, he was more specifically described as a theistic Satanist, which, of course, is an oxymoron. And, you know, it just means devil worshiper. But uh, because Satanism is Satanism and Satanism isn't devil worship, as I've said many times, there is no rational reason to consider these two things to be different denominations of the same religion. They are not. They are too dissimilar on a fundamental level. Anyway, this clip was broken up into chapters, and I wasn't going to listen to the whole thing, so I skipped to the chapter marked Contemporary Satanism, which is another bogus term you see being used, always in an effort to give the illusion that there was something called traditional Satanism, which was an actual Satanism, which again is only devil worship. But, you know, it implies that there's there was an actual codified religion called Satanism before 1966 that people were practicing, even though at best it's a mishmash of occult stuff that other people were throwing the label of Satanism on. So I skip ahead, and the two hosts ask the guest about the Satanic Bible, and the guest says, oh, that's Slavian Satanism, that's different. But then he goes on to an anecdote from years ago where a friend of his had the book and told her to th he told her to throw it away because it was dangerous. I guess this was before he became a devil worshiper himself. And he says, and they're led by uh, who is it? Whose name sounds like a cartoon character. And I'm thinking there was a cartoon character named Peter Gilmore. If there is, I'd never heard of it. And eventually one of the hosts brings up Lucian Greaves. And then he goes on from there. Oh, yes, they're in Salem and recently were firebombed. Okay, so this former ex-Satanist they bring on as an expert, you know, supposedly on this subject. Can't even get the Church of Satan and the Satanic Temple straight. And is apparently clueless to the fact that the Satanic Temple rejects the Satanic Bible. But then, on top of all that, 
he launches into the conspiracy theory that gets thrown at the Church of Satan from time to time, which is, oh, well, these devil, these Satanists say that they're atheist, but when you get up to the higher ranks, they really do believe in a literal Satan. And then he applies this same conspiracy theory, not just to us, the Church of Satan, but to Kevin Soling's prank group, you know, the Satanic Temple. So he sincerely believes Doug Masicko is a devil worshiper and just tries to play an atheist to the public. And meanwhile, of course, these Christian idiots keep taking the bait from Kevin Soling and company, from Doug Masicko and company, and his boss, Kevin Soling, and the rest of the media whore gang. I keep telling these evangelical Christians, you shouldn't be showing up to protest the stamp temple with signs saying, John 316. You should have signs saying, where is Kevin Soling's tax records? But no, it's the same old stupidity. The conservatives see the pranks of the satanic temple and they say, uh, uh, I see Satan, I see black cloaks. Me no need to hear anything else. Bad, bad, bad. You need Jesus. Then likewise, the liberals see the stunts of the satanic temple and say, uh, the, They're trolling the holy rollers. Me hate holy rollers. Good, good, good. Me give money. And the media, of course, sees this and say, Urder, put the word Satanist in the headline. We get more clicks and shares. So this endless train of short-term outrage and impulsive stupidity. But getting getting back to this idea of like, oh, you secretly believe in a literal Satan or if you're in the Church of Satan, you move up the ranks, and then at a high rank, it's suddenly revealed we believe in a literal Satan secretly. Okay, first of all, if our goal was to promote a belief in a literal Satan, why wouldn't we just start with that? Because I have to tell you, there are certainly deranged people out there who believe and revere a literal Satanism, a literal Satan as an actual supernatural deity, and we reject them because that's not Satanism. You know, I I know these people exist because people like that float into Satanism forums or they'll message the Church of Satan and say, Hi, I hear the voice of Satan in my head. I'm one of you guys. And we have to say, No, you are not. Get lost. Go seek psychiatric help. But, you know, do these Christians, do they really think, for example, that when I got my title of magister in the Church of Satan, like Peter Gilmore pulled me aside and said, you know, Bill, you've done such a great job over the years writing these essays and giving these interviews, these talks in the media on Satanism and explaining how it's a non-theistic philosophy that takes Satan only as a symbol. And, you know, you've done a great job helping us on Facebook on that forum, keeping it free of devil worshipers and explaining, you know, what Satanism is and really believing that and exemplifying it well. Well, now that you've, you're clearly somebody firm in these convictions, we'd like to you to stop all of it immediately and believe in the exact opposite. Just do that, Bill. Just stop believing everything you believe and now believe the exact opposite. And don't tell anybody because, uh, yeah. So these Christians not only believe something like that happened, but they also believe I said, oh, okay, Magus Gilmore, I'll go ahead and do that right away. It makes no fucking sense. Then again, of course, if these people were any good at critical thinking, they probably wouldn't be Christians in the first place. To end this little rant on a positive note, though, when I clicked on this YouTube click clip of the uh, Catholic show, I got an ad. An ad started playing, and the ad had a lot of sexual innuendo. So I guess YouTube's algorithms, you know, all come full circle and balance out in the end. The sin of lust wins again. I'm going to end the show here. Thank you all for listening, and until next time, Hail Satan. You have been listening to Satan's Plane. For more information about the show, visit the official website at satansplane.com. And for more information about Satanism itself, visit churchofsatan.com. 
This episode, copyright 2023, Magister Bill M.